So we figured out that when we say something as simple as saying a helium atom has an electron configuration that looks like 1s2, two electrons each in 1s orbitals, what we really mean by that in a quantum mechanical sense is the wave function looks like a spin up 1s electron, uh, a wave function for electron 1, a spin down uh, 1s wave function for electron 2, but we have to take the anti-symmetrized combination of those two Hartree products, and then we have to make sure it's normalized as well. We're now in a position to understand why it is that, or what it is we mean when we say the electron configuration for an atom like lithium is 1s2, 2s1. That would uh, naively seem to suggest that the wave function would look something like a spin-up electron uh, in the 1s orbital, a spin-down electron in the 1s orbital, and then uh, a spin-up electron in the 2s orbital for electron number three. So that would be fine, except for the fact that it's not anti-symmetrized and it's not normalized. Uh, so in order to make this a properly anti-symmetrized uh, function, we need to make sure that if I have a function of coordinates of electron 1 and 2 and 3, if I exchange um, those any two electrons, I have to get back the opposite of the negative of the function that I started with. So in particular, if I exchange electrons 1 and 2, I need to get the opposite of what I started with. If I exchange electrons 1 and 3, or if I exchange electrons 2 and 3, any of those exchanges, I need to get the negative of the original wave function. So there's three different exchanges I need to make sure I'm anti-symmetric with respect to. The function as I've written it here isn't anti-symmetric with respect to any of them. A somewhat better version of this wave function we can start with what I wrote down originally 1s alpha 1 minus uh, I'm sorry times 1s beta 2 times 2s alpha 3. My procedure for anti-symmetrizing this wave function says to take any one of these exchanges, if I exchange electrons 1 and 2, I should get a term in the wave function that looks like the opposite of what I started with. So I can just build that in by hand. I can put in a, a 1s beta, 1s alpha, 2s alpha with a negative sign. So I've built in a term that looks like, uh, so this is 1s alpha for electron 2. This term is the 1, 2 exchange of this term, and I've put it in with a negative sign. Likewise, I can include a negative term where I've exchanged electrons 1 and 3. So that's going to look like 2s alpha for electron 1, 1s beta for electron 2, 1s alpha for electron 3. And the 2, 3 exchange is going to look like 1s alpha for electron 1, 2s alpha for electron 2, 1s beta for electron 3. You can look at these terms and convince yourself that each one of these terms is a particular um, exchange of the first term, and they've all shown up with a negative sign. So far, so good, except that if I take this as my new wave function, and I perform any of the one, uh, any one of the exchanges on it, it's going to exchange the terms in every one of these terms. So this term and this term are okay with respect to uh, electron 1 and 2 exchange, but these are not necessarily. So if I keep repeating this process, I can get terms that look like So this term, for example, is results from an exchange of electrons 1 and 2 on this term. And so now these two terms are anti-symmetric with exchange uh, of electrons 1 and 2. And likewise here, if I exchange one's electrons 1 and 2 in this term, I'll get a term that looks like 2s alpha, 1s alpha, 1s beta. 
So now it turns out I'm finished. Each one of these terms, if I exchange any pair of electrons, I can find elsewhere in the same function uh, the, the same term um, with a negative sign. So, and we can convince ourselves that this is the right number of terms because my terms, which look like 1s alpha, 1s beta, 2s alpha, there should be six different permutations of those three terms in every possible order, and I've got six terms in this function. So every possible permutation of uh, the three one electron orbitals is there. So the normalized version of this wave function, if I take all those terms together because there's six terms in it, turns out the normalized version of this function won't be terribly surprising to see that that looks like one over square root of six times the sum of these six terms. So again, I've taken every possible permutation of these uh, Hartree products, and depending on how many times I've exchanged the variables, if I've only exchanged them once, then I use a negative sign. If I've exchanged them once and then again, I use a positive sign. So the net result of all this is um, that this is a properly normalized and anti-symmetrized version of the wave function that we mean when we say 1s2, 2s1, two electrons with different spins in a 1s orbital, and one uh, in a 2s orbital. There's a much easier way, as it turns out, of writing down one of these uh, anti-symmetrized, normalized wave functions without having to go through this process of writing down every possible combination and then um, changing the signs. And the, the shorthand way of doing that I can observe that the wave function I've just written down If you have had a course in linear algebra, you can get the result. Uh, sorry, this should be 1s alpha 3. By taking uh, a determinant. So if I write Going across one of the rows in this matrix, I can write the same function just with different electrons as the argument. And as I go down the columns in the wave function, I write different uh, orbitals, 1s alpha, 1s beta, 2s alpha. So in column number one, they're all for electron number one. In column number two, they're all for electron number two. And in column number three, they're all going to be for electron three. Uh, 1s beta for three. 2s alpha for 3. Okay, so I've written this particular matrix. Again, if you've had linear algebra and you know how to take a determinant, you just write this matrix down, take the determinant of it, and it turns out each one of the, the products of three terms that show up in this determinant will be one of the terms that show up in the wave function, and the signs will be exactly as they need to be um, in, the, in the properly anti-symmetrized wave function. In the more general sense, for something larger than lithium, if I have n different electrons in some atom, so something possibly much larger than lithium, then what I need to do is take 1 over the square root of n factorial. If I have only 3 electrons, then 3 factorial gives me uh, 6. If I have n electrons, then there's going to be n factorial different terms in this uh, wave function. And then the determinant I need is um, Similarly, I have every different column is for a different electron, every different row is for a different function. So even if I didn't want to do a 1s, 1s, 2s electron configuration, if I wanted to make an electron configuration with any product of orbitals I want, I can write down this determinant as the product of n different one electron functions. First column is for electron 1, second column is for electron 2, and the third column, uh, sorry, the final comma is for electron n. So I have a much larger matrix, an n by n matrix, that if I take the determinant of that matrix, divide it by the square root of n factorial, then what I have here is an anti-symmetrized and properly normalized wave function. This procedure. is called finding the Slater determinant. 
So if I have a uh, product of one electron orbitals, if I have a Hartree product of one electron orbitals that I want to use to represent a wave function in order to make sure it's properly anti-symmetrized and properly normalized, I take this Slater determinant of it. And I should point out that the Slater determinant is, is just a mnemonic, just a simple way of, of remembering a rule for how to write down the correct combination of these Hartree products in a way that's, that's properly anti-symmetrized and normalized but it does save a lot of time if you need to be able to write down one of these wave functions.